Hello everyone, Cookie Hobby is here with the 1973 FJ40 project car. Um, haven't posted in a while, I'm sorry. <laughs> things got in the way. Uh, things have changed since you last saw this thing. Uh, I've been rearranging how, you know, my workspace got everything laid out on the back wall there. Or not the back wall, but, you know, the side yard. So I've just been reorganizing stuff, but things have come up with this that I did not really intend. I mean, nobody intends for this to happen, but... This engine is really, really dirty. It has really gr gritty um, old oil buildup because whoever the little dingus was who owned this last did not change the oil in it. They left oil in there. It's, I wouldn't be surprised if there was the original oil in this car, dare I say. Um, but it's pretty bad. So I was debating on even taking the whole engine out, but without a garage, I can't do that. I was hoping I can get it whole this engine completely torn down maybe because it's as a part as it'll ever be you know for a long while I could get the pistons out you know hone the cylinders put new rings in it you know things like that and really get in there and clean all that crap out but yeah the environment I have I don't have a garage um, it's gonna it's gonna be a mess if I do that that way so I think I've been was thinking about it last night I think what I'm going to do is I'm just going to drop the crankshaft out the out of the motor um, so I can actually get some access underneath there and really, really get get it clean to the best of my abilities because I don't even have a lift. I mean, I have a jack, but it lifts it about as high as, the, as these car ramps do. So um, today for this video, I, we're, we're going to go ahead and remove the transmission, I think. Um, might as well clean that too, inspect it, maybe even... Took, take a peek inside, make sure the synchronizer rings are all uh, in good shape and there is no funny business happening underneath there. So yeah, without further ado, let's get on with it. Alright, so here we are underneath the car. Uh, I did post on Instagram on the setup I have. Uh, it, the tripod's laying on its side, but I realized um, the camera would not be pointing in the right orientation. The whole video would be sideways. So right now I have this, uh, I have the, um, the tripod head angled 90 degrees because luckily that that's an option, but I have to have this, this leg, um, pointing away from the ground, which I was originally intending for it, you know, because there's nothing else to put on the ground. I don't want the camera on the ground, so I have it on a cinder block with a bicycle inner tube in between it to not screw up my tripod, and yes, I do wince at it every time I look at it, so... But it works. So now the video is pointing and it's, you know, <laughs> angled the right way. So here we are. First things first, we need to remove this drive shaft. So there are a couple of, well, a couple of fasteners. We've got a couple of bolts, four bolts on this side and four bolts and nuts on that side. So let's see, what size are those? Those look like 12s. Let me see. Please say I put my 12 back in here. Yes, I did. It is not a 12. I should have known better it was a 14, I swear if it's, okay. Okay. These are not that tight. Well, luckily I'm not driving it around, so. And they are super gummy, which points towards a transmission seal leak, so. Well, I knew that before. I had a feeling, because it is a little wet right there. Yeah. It is. Very thick. I did train the transmission fluid um, not too long ago in it. And I went for a ride to see how it felt. Um, the oil, that, the fluid that came out of this thing was green and it was like molasses. I wouldn't be surprised if that was the original fluid that this car came with. So, good thing we got that all straightened out. But, we still have a little ways to go with this. Come on, get in there. It is, this, this nut is super gummy, like... I feel like there's gummy bears wedged in between the threads in this nut. Oh, I just realized, how am I going to rotate the drive shaft? The rear wheels have to be off the ground. Oof, I'm just going to have to really deal with it and get in here. Luckily, it's pointing the right direction, so I got that going for me. This is not very easy. My whole entire neck was sore for about a week. 
after being underneath the car because you know you're lifting your head the whole time and I don't have a pillow to rest my head on. <laughs> it's ridiculous. It's a little wet. Maybe that's just condensation. I think that's just condensation, but I could be wrong. So, <laughs> that's one. So, um, Christmas passed. I did get like a couple things for Christmas. One, candy, of course. Stocking stuffers, you never do that without candy. But um, I actually got a check for Christmas, and it was for my grandfather. He passed away about a decade ago, and he wrote a check to me, like specifically for me, when I was only one years old. Um, I guess he saw something in me. He saw like a passion. Because I watched him work on a lawnmower and I, he see it, saw that I was extremely interested in it. And he was scrambling to get this done to write out a check and get everything situated for me before he passed because he knew it was coming. So he wrote out a check to me, savings check, for $1,000. And it was a really heartfelt note attached to it as well. So I'm probably going to put a decent amount of that money towards this, but $1,000 when it comes to this project car is nothing. That will be eaten up really quickly. So I have to really um, look at how I spend this money. Um, Got to really, really do some research into the parts I'm looking at and see if there's any way possible to get it cheaper because parts for this thing, the places you buy the parts for this thing, sell them at rapist prices. So... things taking forever to get off. I still have the other side to do. I've had this drive shaft off before because I had to deal with this parking brake drum. Whoever owned this last um, drove with the parking brake on and I guess the, dr the shoes had rust on them, the drum, and it was able to bite and then it sheared the four bolts. But yeah, I've had this drive shaft off before to get to that parking brake drum because, you know, oh, jeez, son of a, okay, family friendly, <laughs> um, just dropped the ratchet on my face, like the little dumbwit I am, alright, I have no clue what I was saying before, oh yeah, that's right, I've had this drive shaft off before to look at this parking brake drum because somebody drove with the parking brake on and sheared the bolts. Which is another thing I gotta look into because the parking brake drum backing plate has been completely like mangled, so I have to repair that because I cannot find any new ones. Unless I buy a parts car. Okay. Ugh, the wrench is so far away. Okay, I'm just gonna unbolt it from the differential here and I'll probably just skip this ahead in post processing anyways. Oh jeez, I just threw the ratchet at the camera and luckily it did not hit it. Should probably put the bolts back on the or the nuts back on the bolts that they came off of. They are super gummy. Even back here, this whole entire underside of this car is covered in about half an inch of clay. So that's another thing I gotta look into. Oh that one I can barely get to. Come on. So yeah, I've been meaning to get out here too because I'm on Christmas break. Been on Christmas break for about a week now. And I've been meaning to get out here. Um, but I had to go somewhere at the first part of it. I've been out there for a couple of days and then I came back. The cold front came and made it about freezing. And I could have came out to work then, but I was just like, you know, laying low that day. And today, finally, is the nice day in a while because it's about 55 degrees out and that is the perfect temperature to work on a car with short sleeves on. It's perfect. There, this rear drive shaft should now be completely out, ready to go.
And yes, I do have a um, a wheel chalk underneath one of the rear wheels. I know there's probably gonna be somebody out there who's gonna be like, "You should put a wheel chalk underneath the wheels." Don't worry, I got it. There, there's the drive shaft. It's out. Then we have a gigantic 30 millimeter bolt or a 34. I don't know what I can't remember. So that looks really wet with fluid hmm have to look into that but there's that now I'll get the front one out shouldn't be that hard um, so I'll probably just skip ahead and I'll get back to you when both of these drive shafts are out all right finally got all the drive shafts out both the front and back the one the front one specifically uh, where it connects to the differential was an absolute pain in the ass they were really, really cinched on there. So now, next thing's next. I'm going to go ahead and remove the speedometer cable. I don't know if I should remove this drum. It might ease in the burden because of weight. I don't know how heavy this is. And I'm planning on carrying it. So I might need to remove this transfer case from it too. Who knows? We'll see. Um, so let's go ahead and remove this speedometer cable and to do that I'm going to use a pair of channel locks maybe I should remove this drum uh, let's see it's going to remove this cotter pin I'm using forceps right now, ratcheting forceps, to remove a freaking cotter pin. Give me a break. Okay. Now, oh, yeah, I didn't tighten that down all the way, I don't think, because I, I knew I was going to take this off anyways. Cool. Well, I don't have to go hunt for a socket now that will fit this castle nut. Here, let me go ahead. There, how's that? You see a little bit better? So I'm just removing this castle nut that holds this drum on. And I think there should be a washer in there too, but. Ooh, yeah. There's the washer. Yep. She leaks. Faux show. Sure. There's that seal actually right there. Um, do we need a speedy sleeve? I don't think so. I think this is okay. There's our drum. Definitely needs a bit of a cleaning. Oh, wait a minute. This is going to leak fluid now if I... Oh, jeez. This is going to be a pain in the ass. I should probably see if I can remove the transfer case away from this too. Because I maybe I have to... Remove it as two separate units. There's the channel box. Oh boy. I don't know. I'll have to look into it. Oh, that's not too bad. Assuming it's spring loaded. Maybe not. I thought it was spring loaded. Pretty simple. that tells you how fast you are going. Awesome. I'm going to go ahead and root it up. We are the at the uh, rear engine mount. Okay, so that's good. Um, there's these wires up here. They're not even connected to anything. Okay. I think what we need to do now is, thankfully, get out from underneath the car and work in the in interior, get the transmission cover off. To do that, we have to take the heater out. Um, yeah, let's go ahead and do that. All right, we are now in the interior. Yay. That's for a change instead of being underneath a freaking car. All right, so... My battery and my camera's almost dead. I probably have to charge it for a little bit after with this, but 
let's see what we can do before it dies. <laughs> so, first off, let's go ahead and remove these seats. I know, I'm kind of out of shot right now. Um, it's a little interesting how I have it set up. I had to move some stuff around because the front seat's real crowded. So I can get you all in here. Um, you're currently next to the drive shafts, camshaft, and new parts, of course. Yeah. So, it's a little interesting. Oh uh, yeah, we're on a slope, which means this door is going to keep on smacking my butt. Charged with sexual harassment. <laughs> Okay, so that one, okay, I should probably keep track of where these go because they're all different. And then the rear ones, which seatbelts hook up to, look like 17s actually, those are pretty ginormous. They are indeed 17s, wow. So right now I'm just removing the rear bolts for the seat, which also hold these seatbelts in. That's one. And what about the other side? Ah, yeah, there's one right here, too. Excuse me. Sorry. Don't mind me. Oh, sorry. I probably shouldn't be yelling into the camera. Ah. It's a little tight. Ow. Damn it, door. I gotta find something to hold this up. Here. Here, a wheelbarrow handle. There, that'll keep that open and stop smacking me in my freaking pelvis. Alright, let me grab an extension and move this seat up a little bit. Okay. There we go. And that should be the driver's seat pretty much ready to be taken out. phone in here. So now I gotta hunt for that. Oh, it's outside. Of course it is. Gotta figure out where I'm gonna put those seats now. More stuff that's stockpile. <sighs> Damn it. Of course. Oh, my battery bank's dead anyways. Oh. Lucky me. What's my phone at then? Oh, cool. Okay, here we're at. What did I just say? I don't know what I just said. That was quite interesting. Come on. So now I'm just going to put these bolts back where they went because they are all different, surprisingly and interestingly enough, but. That's why. That guy goes there. This guy goes here. Actually, I should probably point the camera downward. This camera's battery is bad, I think, because it does not hold a charge for long at all. Alright, so now I'm going to go to the other side, remove this seat. I don't think, I hope we don't have to remove the fuel tank. I'm going to look into that. But, see you on the other side. Hey, I'm back! <laughs> and now I don't have anything to hold this. Oh, yeah, I do. Nope, never mind. I don't. I lied. So this door's going to keep on smacking me. Oh, my 
and ratchet just jammed. Oh, damn it. I hate it when this happens. All right, got to get a new ratchet. It happens every once in a while. For some reason, this ratchet jams. I have to take it apart. Damn it. Sorry about that. I had to go get a spare ratchet. Yep, we're still going. Uh, that was stupid. I'm going to vacuum this thing out, too. These ratchets I all repaired. I had to take them all apart because they were sitting in the water bath. So now they work. And it saves my ass today because that ratchet decided to be stupid. What happens is there's like a little ratcheting block in there and there's like a little selector fork and once, so every once in a while, it'll jump from behind the ratcheting block and jam up. So that's what happens. And it's a pain in the ass because it happens quite frequently if you use if you go too fast with the ratchet. So I guess I just need to slow down then. And that's the last one. Now this can come out. <clears throat> oh, there's a washer here still. Okay, gotta find out where this washer goes now. I'll figure it out. That guy, for this thing. Then we gotta remove the center console. I don't, do we have to remove this fuel tank? I think we might have to. Oh boy. Well, I think it might be low on fuel anyways, so that's good for us, I guess. Alright. Now, we just need to remove this center console. Uh, so let's see. Okay, it's just one bolt back here. Really? Just one bolt? Oh, okay. And we're going to have to remove this whole bar assembly, so, which actually is the same amount of bolts anyway, so, here we go. Let's remove this bar that goes across. Okay, that's one. Damn it! That hurt! Ah, oh, I just caught my freaking elbow bone on the freaking center console. That sucked. That bolt came out easier than I thought it would. That's interesting. Okay, and there's one more over here that I need an extension for. snap? What was that? I thought I broke it. Where'd it go? What the hell? Well, there's nothing in the hole anymore, but where'd the bolt go? That's interesting. Um, okay. Well, it's out either way. I'll have to look for that bolt separately. Maybe we'll put this in the back. So now, let's look for that bolt. I have no clue where that flew off to. Hmm, I don't know. I need another light. Uh, where'd I put it? Be right back. Oh, staring right at it. Okay. Let me see where that went. Oh, it's underneath the rear heater. I thought so. It did not break. That's what I was worried about. It was pretty interesting how it came off, though. 
All right. So now let's go and remove that heater from here. Roach caca. Got two bolts on each side. Plus we gotta remove the hoses on it. Um, I think. Uh, I don't know. Maybe not. Okay, so it's just these two hoses going to it. Okay. Let me go grab a flathead. I'll be right back. Found one. Always checking if this is going still. There it is. Ah! Oh, that's super rusty. I think I might break this. This heater. Damn, man, that's not good. Um, I'll try 10 mil. 10 mil work? Yes, it will. Might be able to be more precise with a ratchet. There we go. It's loosening. Maybe I should remove it from here. I don't know. Can I remove this defroster tube? Yes, I can. Ooh, more roach cock on mouse nest. <sighs> ah. Damn, damn, damn. Hold on a second. Oh, man. Okay. This is getting to be pretty interesting. Well, I'd rather have this break than the heater, so I guess that works. Gonna need new hose clamps. Where'd the piece of. Oh, it's still on there. Okay. Um, that was interesting. Let's try this guy. This guy's gonna give me the same exact problem, isn't he? Let me try a, a wrench. A wrench. It's much more open in here, isn't it? Come on. Uh, I'm going to have a freaking aneurysm. Come on. Ah, I just went further. Damn it. Oh. Yes? Question mark? Yes, there we go. Damn. Safe to say this heater needs a flush. These hose clamps are definitely no good. You know what? 
I'm just gonna cut them. I'm not gonna risk tearing those off my heater since they're really rusty. Just gonna be better and easier just to cut the hose. There we go. Hose has been cut. We got 19 seconds left on the timer. Alright. Okay, let's continue. So, let's get this boot out of the way. Okay. I think this heater is free. You just gotta get those bolts out. And this right is still lashing up. I'm probably gonna need to charge this camera uh, soon. In the meantime, I'll probably uh, fix that ratchet and maybe the rest of this heater out if this camera cuts off. We'll see. Heater box is free. Still a little bit of fluid in there. Yeah, we'll put our roach caca and mouse nest material in there. Where'd that bolt roll off to? Oh, come on. I don't know where it rolled off to. I, just, I thought I remembered where it rolled off to. What the hell is wrong with me? Don't be a pain in the ass. Thread in. Maybe that's threading in. I don't know. That's definitely threading in. This is threading in as well. Okay, we're. Ow! Second time! Same elbow! Damn it! Okay, where's that bolt? I don't know where that bolt went. Did y'all see where it rolled off to? I don't know. <sighs> oh, I'm staring right at it. There it is. Well, that gives us better access underneath the dash, too, to get to the defroster and stuff. Actually, yeah, that's pretty interesting. I haven't seen that before. Cool. All right. And... I think we have to remove the fuel tank. But that's gonna be fun. Take tons of pictures. <laughs> okay. Let's go and remove this fuel tank, I guess. Let me see, is there a better way to mount this light? Like that, maybe? Yeah, we'll, we'll do it. We'll go with that. <sighs> okay. I think this is where I'm going to stop for now. I'm going to go ahead and charge the battery, and I'll be back with you in a short jiffy due to the magic of editing. All right, I'm back. Charge the battery. Uh, got a bite to eat and repaired my ratchet. So now it's working again. So I think we're going to have to remove this fuel tank. So I'm going to take you know pictures of all of everything. You know, take a picture of... Oh, light's not going. I need light. Uh, hang on the steering wheel, I guess. Put on the low power met setting. We need to be terribly bright. Actually, might need to put it down here, actually. How's that? Is that too bright? No, it's kind of glaring. That might be a little bit better. Okay. So, I'm going to go ahead and take picture of this fuel sending unit wiring. I mean, it's pretty straightforward, but I like to put it exactly how it was before. So we just need to disconnect it. And that's loose. Uh, where's my Phillips? Let me grab a Phillips. Got a Phillips. That's another thing I gotta fix. This fuel sending unit isn't quite working for some reason. 
I've looked at it and I don't know if I can fix it. I might have to just replace it. Move the wire. Okay. Then we got a couple of blue hoses over here. This stupid jet, you have to move over here right now? Come on! Alright, well. Let's move this cover, which holds. Oops. Shut up! <laughs> oh, give me a minute. All times you decide to fly, you decide to fly right now. Anyways. Got to remove this cover, which holds our hoses and all their connections, the EVAP lines, you know, stuff like that. So, yeah, let's get on with it, I guess. What size is that? It's a 12. Where's my 12? It's on the other ratchet. one which is a 10 mil which holds that little canister I'm not sure what it is it's just a little black box oh there's another 10 mil on this side come on man Covers removed. Where's that 10 mil? Is this it? I think so. I'm just gonna put it back there. Alright, that's the little black box I was talking about. So, let's go ahead and take note of where all this goes. I'm gonna take a video with my phone. Alright, so this one, this line goes up and around. Okay, this one. This middle one hooks to this one. This middle one goes to that one. And this one, I'm assuming, goes to the middle. Wait, what? No. Sorry. No. Um, this one goes to that one. Does it really matter? I don't think it matters, but... So, let's go and remove these three lines. Okay, so let's see what we got here. That's the wrong one. I was looking at the camera. Come on. Go. There, that's one. That one's already off. <laughs> Come on. Ah, let me get a smaller flat in. Oh, I should probably put these bolts back where they go. That's not helping. We're just gonna manhandle it. There we go. Jeez. All right. So that's all of our three lines. Then we got 
Um, one line going into the side here. Let's take a picture of that. Okay, let's go and remove it. Okay. The crawl in here. Oh, there's the other tent stake. That's good. Sorry, I saw the thing that was from the uh, this cover that covers the car right now, and it got all bent up due due to a storm, and I, because I was missing one of the stakes, it was right here. And the crevice between the tank and the uh, door, door jam. All right, here we go. In here now. Could have just gone to the other side, but I don't care. Okay. Ah, gotcha. Then we got this one over here, which looks like a uh, fuel vent. Take a picture of that. Okay. Yep, that looks good. Okay. This one's probably going to be seized as well. Uh, maybe. No, I don't know. This one's actually turning, so with this one. Pretty interesting hose clamp design. This guy's probably going to be really stuck on here. Ugh. Actually, it's coming off. Okay, there. Then let's move these three lines out of the way. Um, yeah, okay, let's move these up the line so I don't lose those. Then we've just got that guy right there. That's the main fuel filler hose. Ah. Maybe this one up here will be more forgiving. Yeah. <laughs> Once it's removed, you know, you can just slide it out. Pretty much free. I just gotta get these uh, fuel. This one of them's already broken. They're mounts, anyways. So that's that. And then there's this side that still needs to be undone. Let me grab a more official screwdriver. Gosh, that was kind of freaky, but it worked. Oh, you didn't get to see the spark show, did you? Dang, there's freaking fireworks all over here. Oh, that was kind of stupid, but it worked either way, so. Bolts out. <laughs> Uh-oh, that's not really good. Okay, this one has a broken bolt anyways, but it should be fine. Now, how does this... Oh, yeah, it's kind of stuck in there, isn't it? Oh, yeah, I gotta remove this. Dummy. There we go. 
go. Bueno. Come on. I was hoping I could remove the other one, but it's not budging. What a pain. Can I remove this fuel filler from the outside, maybe? Let me go grab my keys so I can open the fuel filler cap. Or door, not cap. That's all right. Okay, there's three screws. Or, yeah, three holding it in. That's three. Okay, we can actually rotate this too. Let me see, can we move this fuel tank over any? Here. Alright. Let's see what we got. There we go, it's through. I'm gonna take one more picture of this thing. There's one more hose I gotta get to. All right, cool. So we just got this one last connector right here. There. I think that's the main fuel line actually, so. Uh, yeah, we gotta be careful. Luckily, it's leaning that way, so all the fuel should be going that direction. <laughs> Go ahead and put everything over here. Very carefully step out. Ah, <laughs> uh, there's a couple of cockroaches. Of course there are. Why wouldn't there be? This is the first time I'm having this out. Yeah, there's still a little bit of fuel in there. Oh my. That's an interesting sight. Ooh. Anybody want some big red? <laughs> Alright, let me go ahead and get the uh, vacuum cleaner in here, vacuum all this crap out. And, yeah. Oh, there's the bolt. There's that bolt with the humongous washer that we were looking for. It looks like this was actually the original bolt. There's a couple of bolts here. A nut. Oh. Alright, I'm gonna go, go grab the vacuum cleaner. I'm gonna be right back. Oh, I'm busting my ass. Okay. We're almost there. Two Magnum shell casing. 
facing 22 caliber. Must have been a hunting vehicle. Uh -huh. I wouldn't be surprised. Smells like really, really stale fuel. It's eaten through the paint here. Oh, there's a spring. Cool. Don't know where it goes to. Grab the crevice tool. Okay. That's clean enough for now. So we have good access to everything now to, you know, get it all out of here. Cool. See that there may have been a fuel leak. Because the paint's going away. <laughs> so. Luckily this isn't rusted. Usually it rusts around here and eats away at the uh, fuel tank drain. So. Cool. All right, next thing, we're going to go ahead and remove these two coolant lines uh, that run to this rear heater right here that you're, you know, standing really close to, this guy. And we'll probably go from there. Uh, let's see. Let me go ahead and put these nuts and bolts back where they belong. So, let's go ahead and deal with these coolant lines. Um... Okay. Insulation needs to be replaced, definitely. Alright, let's go ahead and move these couple of bolts that are have brackets holding these guys on. We got back. One minute left on the timer. Okay. Come on. You can do it. Get started. There we go. Oh, that's the rear heater wire. Okay. into that too because the rear heater does not work as far as I know. It did at one point I thought. Look into it. Here we are. Okay. This is where we're working right here. Yeah, all these lines need to be replaced for the most part.
Okay, so my camera battery died again. Stupid freaking camera. But if the audio and video quality changed for the better, that's because I'm doing it with my phone. <laughs> Anyways, let's get on with it. Pretty certain that this one needs to come out still. Uh, all right, locking pliers time. Wish I had a smaller pair. Fit in here a little nicer. What if I get like a really tight fitting socket on there? Like a, an eight or a nine millimeter. Let's try a nine mil. <laughs> nine mil. Okay. Nine mil on the ratchet, right? Where's my ratchet? Am I staring right at it? Put my ratchet. <laughs> oh. We're not the ratchet, the hammer and the ratchet. Okay. I think it's working. Wow, ingenuity, eh? There we go. Did we wreck it? Eh, not terribly. Uh, I mean, well, I'm not gonna use this again. All right, that was the last bolt, as it seems. Should we remove the uh, shifting boots? Yeah. Yeah. 
shifting boot needs to be replaced, I think, too. I'm really interested in what the top of this thing looks like. You know, you see stuff on videos and stuff. It's like, oh, yeah, it looks like that. I, Of course. But when you see it in person, it's like, oh, wow. You know? It's totally different in person. You have to do it yourself in order to really, really get it. Okay. Oh, that tore. Okay. Well, that's fine. Like I said, all these hoses need to be replaced anyways. All right, I think it's time. Uh, maybe I should remove these hoses. Yeah, let's do that. Where did I put the... Uh, Explain why our reverse light isn't working. Cool. Okay, well, mission accomplished. You can get to these top two bolts up here, clean this all off, vacuum it. Looks like a bent cap. Cool. I don't know if we're going to drop the transmission today, but we'll see. Ooh, yikes. That's pretty bad. E. That's gonna be an issue. <laughs> oh man. Oh, it had to drop all the way to the center. Okay. This is how I removed the uh, shifter in my uh, in the Tacoma as well when we replaced the clutch in it. Did a little bit of this. Yes, got it. Lots of, <laughs> smells really bad. Ball joint doesn't look terrible. Uh, set that over there. Cool. All right, um, I'll go ahead and make up part two. This is part one. I'll see you guys next time. Kooky hobbyist out. <laughs>